Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, and we'll plan it. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock from Washington, D.C., the President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet, a group that's going around the world working with 143 different nations looking at the best practices for environmental quality, economic development, and social justice. Thank you for being with us. We have three outstanding guests that are going to be with us and talking about water and water as the essence and the staff of life. And we're looking at different regions of the world and we're going to be talking about uh, the Caribbean, Latin America, Africa, and Asia. And the first outstanding guest that we have with us is Lindsay Madison, who is the Executive Director of International Action. Lindsay, thank you for being here. Thank you. It's a privilege. Uh, thank you for uh, coming and talking with us. I know that uh, you're working uh, currently in uh, South America, which is in uh, Haiti specifically, and then you're going to be expanding into uh, China. But tell us a little bit about uh, International Action. What is the origin, when did it start, and what's the vision for the group? Okay. We're uh, about four years old, um, and I started it, um, have remained the executive director. Um, the purpose is to uh, use a piece of technology, this, uh, which is a chlorinator, uh, takes tablets of chlorine and adds them to water supply in poor countries. Uh, it's very inexpensive. We pay about $40 for this, um, and it can serve on a water tank about 10,000 people, uh, so that it's uh, a reasonably priced uh, thing. The chlorine tablets, which look a good deal like this, which fit in here and melt when the water goes through and mix with the uh, water in a tank, uh, are also very inexpensive. We can probably serve 50,000 people with uh, about $50 a month in chlorine expense. So we could say your vision then is to uh, reach out to uh, least developed nations and trying to provide them a good clean and quality water, is that correct? Right. The primary cause for infant mortality and childhood illness in developing countries are waterborne diseases, cholera, uh, hepatitis, uh, uh, typhoid, uh, and uh, constant chronic diarrhea. Um, these are very destructive and they kill more kids than any other form of disease. Yeah, I understand from the, the reports that have been put out by the United Nations and uh, WHO, the World Health Organization, that half the children that die, die because of bad water. Yeah. We um, started in Port-au-Prince, Haiti about three years ago. Since then, we've put in uh, 120 chlorinators on water tanks, the public water tanks in the city. We have about 400,000 people in Port-au-Prince drinking our water. The city is two and a half million people, um, and it has no sewer system and really no privies. So uh, m most of the water that gets to the public is contaminated, whether it comes from wells or streams or springs, uh, because there's no treatment of sewage. This is one of the things I think, uh, Lindsay Madison, that uh, many of the uh, experts are saying is that if you're going to bring clean water, you need to also bring sanitation along with that. Would that be the contention of international action? Sure. Uh, the problem is that sanitation is enormously expensive. Uh, the infrastructure needed to deal with sewage is uh, quite extraordinary and quite expensive. Uh, we're a small organization with minimum funds. Uh, adding chlorine is, a, as I said, is very inexpensive. Uh, and it does kill off the beasties that are in the water. Correct. Uh, and does protect the kids. We have the reaction of the mothers in the neighborhoods where we've put the chlorinators. Uh, is almost miraculous. In, in uh, Within three or four days after we start chlorine, 
uh, in a neighborhood, the kids stop having diarrhea constantly. And these are kids that have enormous problems of diarrhea continuously. Um, and if that's not uh, stopped or treated, then that's uh, many times, it, one, it reduces their energy and strength, but secondly, it could lead to death. Well, and the, the, something that doesn't often get commented on, it also lowers their IQ. Uh, it has a tremendous impact on their uh, uh, education level and, and their ability to, to function. Um, and I, um, I think one of the reasons they have such, such tragic uh, uh, problems with their children in Port-au-Prince has to do with the water supply and this constant uh, sickness. Well, we're, we're using Haiti as the case example, but if you look around the, around the globe, there's some hundred plus uh, developing countries and they all have the same problems where it's just, it's yeah. bad water quality. Well, and then again, that's coupled with uh, poor sanitation. We picked Haiti because it's probably the toughest uh, situation for children, has the worst water supply of about 150 countries, uh, but it's only a couple of hours from Washington. Uh, and um, we figured this would be a model for the World Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank and a series of institutions which are in Washington. And we tried to lure them into looking at the uh, impact of our uh, program in Haiti. Uh, actually, the people that have found us and are beginning to spread us internationally are not these institutions that I thought would be. I was be just getting ready to <laughs> ask you about this uh, new well, venture that you're going to go into. Well, Tell us a little bit about your outreach into Asia. There is um, a, an agency of the Chinese government uh, run by a woman, Barbara Ma, uh, called the Consultative Council on Science and Technology for poor for the rural poor in China. And uh, now, they, is this a government agency or I is this an NGO? No, I think it's I think it's a government agency. government agency. Okay. Um, the um, but in any case, they discovered our uh, website. They got very interested in the technology. Uh, and and they want us to come to China. They've given us a province in China, Shanxi, uh, which is out in the west, is one of the poorer provinces in China. Uh, the dimensions of the problem in rural China is quite extraordinary. Uh, the there are thirteen thousand water systems in that province. My goodness. And, <laughs> So Now, how would that compare to uh, the situation you're working in Haiti? I know you're in Port-au-Prince, which is the capital city. Yeah. So about how many water systems uh, is in Port-au-Prince and well, do that in conjunction with what you're going to be vis visiting and seeing in China? The fact of the matter is, in Port-au-Prince, we've done all the water tanks, 120 water tanks. Those okay, are the neighbors. So it's 120 uh, but, of the water tanks. But that means only 400,000 Haitians get clean water. There are another 2 million people in the city that don't have water tanks. And uh, we're Now, with the, with the poor distribution, I've been in uh, Port-au-Prince uh, three different occasions. We've worked on projects with Rotary International, both for vocational education and, and health care. And in traveling around the city, there was just not an adequate uh, water transportation uh, system there. So what are the other people doing? Well, and why aren't they using tanks? There, is, uh, there are about 400 trucks in Port-au-Prince that go down into City Soleil, which is the lowest point near the bay, uh, and pump water out of an underground source there, which I believe is probably the dirtiest water in the city. So it's just, the lowest point in the and, uh, city. And everything is coming off the hills right down into this water yeah. source. And these three or four hundred trucks drive up into the city, uh, the higher parts of the city, and uh, deliver this water to vendors who sell it to the poorest people in the city. And uh, for a time, I was about trying to put chlorine in the tanks of those trucks. But I discovered these are old iron tanks. And if I put chlorine in there, it eats up the iron tank. At which point so they go from uh, a, a tank to a sieve. <laughs> Is that what you're saying, and, Lindsey and, and I get chased by the mafia in uh, 
Port-au-Prince, which controls the water trucks. But let's, uh, let's transport over to China now. So you have this uh, very successful uh, pilot project that you started in Port-au-Prince. Yeah. And now the, uh, the Chinese government's come to you as far as uh, working with one of their uh, most remote provinces. And how do you feel that, how are you going to be able to reach that many uh, water systems in this very large province? We're going to train teams of Chinese. I mean, it, it's so clear it's not going to be it, like train the trainer then? Yeah, absolutely. And um, one of the funny things is that one of the companies that we buy chlorinators from, this chlorinator, uh, and the chlorine tablets, uh, Norweco in Norwalk, Ohio, make many of their chlorinators and chlorine in China. And so they're bringing them, uh, importing them into the United States and right. distributing them out. And, and so now, now we're going to be <laughs> we, we, using them back in China. And the extraordinary thing is that in, in major cities in the United States and uh, even rural areas, we add liquid chlorine and, or gas chlorine to the water. Uh, that's done by professionals because it's very dangerous. Chlorine is uh, very volatile and poison gas. They use it in World War I. Um, our tablets are quite non-dangerous, uh, quite safe to, uh, for well, any amateur. Well, they're very amateur. stable and, and they're solid, so right. they're easy to handle, correct? Right. And uh, so we've got a system that you can give to amateur groups and they can take care of their water problem. Whereas if you use liquid or gas chlorine, uh, you'd probably kill everybody in the region. Now tell us, how did you uh, get started in, in Haiti? What was the process for that? And then how did you go about actually training the, uh, the local expertise to take care of uh, putting in the chlorine and taking care of the tanks? I had a friend who was, worked for AID on a, uh, helping run elections in Haiti. And he dragged me to Haiti. Uh, and I was horrified uh, to discover a city of two and a half million people without a water system, without a sewer system, and so on. Correct. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. And we were using this in rural Honduras in little villages. And I said, I don't see why I can't glue this thing onto the water tank in a city. Uh, and so we just did. We, we sort of invented it out of necessity. So you, uh, so you actually started working in Honduras first. Yeah. Which I was yeah. down there just recently for a, a big international conference, which yeah. is called TIC Americas. And this is to develop uh, high technology green uh, products that can be used around the globe. So uh, looking at Honduras and then transferring this into Haiti and now over to China, what are the challenges that you're, well, we have just about 60 seconds. And let's, let's close with this. Looking at Honduras, Haiti, and China, what's the main challenge that you see in about 30 seconds? Huh. Um, Gives you pause, doesn't it? Yeah. The, um, I, I don't, let's think. I, I don't have an answer for that. I, it's one of the things we're having to do now in Haiti is import a fiberglass factory to make tanks because they don't have water tanks. Uh, well, Lindsay Madison, Executive Director of International Action, who is expanding greatly as he sits right in front of us, going around the globe from uh, Honduras, Haiti to China. I'm Dr. Sam Hancock. Thank you for being with us for Emerald Planet, and we look forward to being back with you soon and talking about water, the essence, and the source of life. <laughs>